All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I have a really great video for you guys, so please sit on the seat, enjoy the video, and let's begin the awesome discussion of... I wrote it down, guys. I wrote it down this time. Listen up. Buying bulk. Buying bulk. When is buying bulk relevant to actually negotiating for a better price? That is the discussion for today. Um, I was brought to the attention of this topic because uh, I was asked for a discount for buying, or the client wanted to buy a bunch of graded cards and wanted a discount, which, which is fine. You can ask for anything you want. Obviously, you can ask, but you may not receive, and that's okay. And I always recommend asking. But in this particular case, the graded cards are very rare. And graded cards in general are very rare, and Power 9 and Dual Lands are very rare. I would never, ever give a discount for high-end alpha, beta type of cards, or even unlimited sometimes. And the reason why is buying bulk really in sales negotiation only applies to certain type of things. It, it applies to commodities, commodities, commodities that are things that you can easily have, easily get. I'll give you an example, like real world example. If you go to uh, like a, a flea market, if you go to like any Asian country, or any you know any Asian country, or even like Mexico or something, you'll notice that something like in, in not the tourist areas, you can negotiate like the Bazaar of Baghdad. You can negotiate that style, anything you want. You know, you can you can say, hey, okay, no, 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 I this is uh, this is twenty dollars. How about I give you ten dollars? Right? You can you can negotiate. You always want to negotiate those things, even car rides. In some countries, you know, and, and taxi rides, you negotiate type of things. And also, you, in bulk cases, you might say, hey, hey, I'll tell you what, for the item that was $20, I'll tell you what, if you give me three of those, I'll give you $20. And depending on if the person is that motivated, they'll sell it to you. So, in relevancy to magic cards, when is it relevant to, to, to negotiate buying bulk? Now, I think. In a bullish market, it's really strong for the seller. You gotta look at the current era and the current state of the marketplace. That makes a lot of sense because when you are, for example, selling your house, right, or selling uh, items in, uh, items on a garage sale, right, if the seller is already, you know, if the seller is not motivated to sell because the economy is good, uh, it's very strong, they're not gonna sell their items at a discount. And in fact, if you ask and say, hey, I'm gonna buy, you know, I'll buy all 100 of these DVDs that you have, but I want a 30% discount. They'll be like, no. You know, if, if the market is strong, right, and they don't need the money, then they won't sell. On top of that, they also have to look at something, is supply and demand. If the items that you're selling are easily replaceable, easily replaceable, um, most people are motivated to do a bulk discount because Hey, I can get it again. It's just volume. It's just volume, volume, volume. This happens a lot, though, in Magic. In like the you know, I, if you go to those Grand Prix, they have stacks and stacks of these these foils and bulk rares. You call it bulk rares, right? Bulk commons, bulk uncommons. Those are the stuff that you can get discount of. And and because the margins are those, the margins. That's the key. Is like this, right? It's really big. And the cost of principal investment is very low. So, for example, if you have like a, you know, let's say I was a vendor and I bought bulk of rares at five cents, five cents, and I, then I sold them for twenty-five cents a rare. Okay, this is not like a lot of money, but if you add them up, it's a lot of money, right? For the profit margin, you're making uh, five times their money. That's insane. I mean. But again, not everybody will buy those, but keep in mind when they sell, that's, they're looking at high volume. They're looking at volume, right? Easy transaction, 25 cents. Okay, so follow me here. In that case, they can then ask, the person buying the cards can then ask, hey, can I get a discount on those bulk rares? Well, you're gonna have to buy a lot, right? Well, sure, how about I buy a thousand bulk, thousand bulk rares, that's like, uh, $250 and you give me like 20 bucks off. I mean, the seller should be motivated at that point to do it because they're only taking what? 
they're only taking a, a percentage off that final sale, but their main profit levels is like 500%. So keep in mind, that is when that applies in Magic the Gathering. I, I also want you to know that asking for a discount is not an insult. I think a lot of people have a bad rap or a, a fear of asking for a discount. I think it's the way you ask. I think if you ask a way where it's rude and unprofessional, you're never gonna get anywhere anyway. It's like saying, hey, 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 waiter, come here, come here, come here. Why in the world I asked for medium rare steak and you gave me medium, this is the stupidest, you're the dumbest idiot waiter in the world. You are so stupid, I don't know why I'm even here. Is that the right way to ask someone? Or is it, appropriate, is it better to be professional, to be kind? That is the way you ask. And that is, this, you know, it's hard on email. It's hard on Messenger because uh, there's so much information that goes through there and it's, and it's so fast that you can read into things too quickly. So that brings up the second thing is when you negotiate on these type of things, don't take it personally. Don't take things personally so much. Be more, think of it as a business. Think of it as, hey, this guy is giving me information here. He has his thoughts. For example, if he values his if he values his card for five thousand dollars and you want to pay forty five hundred and he kept saying well unfortunately there's only five in the world and I'm really firm at five thousand dollars and you know I, pr I appreciate your offer then you ask him again he's like you know I appreciate it but you know this is very rare and it might go to the right it, it, and I would rather the the card go to the right person but it may not go to you and that's okay because you have to love the card for this price well you're like what the hell did you just say to me? What, what the freak? Oh, I'm not rich enough. Oh, oh, that's what that is. It was Colonel Mustard and the Mustard Stick. That's what it was. Oh, you want, you want Warren Buffett to come buy your cards, not me, Mr. $4,500. That's not enough for you. See, see what I just did there? I took it personally, right? People take things personally a lot in Magic the Gathering investing, and I'm telling you, that's what breeds, that breeds the trolls. It breeds the haters. It breeds all those negative people out there in this world in general. Don't be like that. Don't think, take things so personally. It's business. It is business. Another thing I will say about sales negotiation, especially in bulk, bulk deals, is do not, do not get, do not worry too much about the, uh, you know, like, do not worry too much about like missing a card here and there, your time. I find, this is kind of funny, like, I, I have friends who have done bulk deals and they literally sit there and count all the freaking cards over and over and over again and make sure that they got all of their rares, what they bought, or all the rares that were sold, look, you're gonna have to use one of those, I don't have my box with me, a thousand cal box or whatever the heck it is, and you're just gonna have to just guesstimate. Or get a scale, do some weight analysis, and say, hey, thousand, thousand cards weighs X amount of pounds. Done, right? You may be off, you may be, you may be charging them too much, but as a buyer and a seller, do not, do not for the love of God, waste your time sitting, at sitting and looking at bulk rares, or commons, oh my God, if you sit there with 5,000 count boxes of commons and you sit there and count how many commons you have, oh, there's so many better things you can do with your life. So many better things. All right, guys. I hope you guys thought the video was helpful. It was very interesting to me, this topic brought up. I will leave you with this thought on bulk rares in relationship to high-end cards. And this is the main reason why I do not like to deal with uh, new cards. This is this is kind of a kind of a kind of a inside story here. You have to realize at a certain point in your life that your time and your passion for something has to fit. It has to fit. It can't be like, oh, I'm making a lot of money on bulk rares, but. I, for me, I don't enjoy counting a bunch of cards and sorting magic cards. It's probably the, one of the worst things that I, I, I despise in magic. I hate sorting cards. My neck hurts. My back hurts. You know, everything hurts. It's just, it's boring. Now, I guess looking at cards here and there, but even look at the alpha beta cards, sorting them, it's a pain in the butt after a while. 
I can tell you that you have to do what you love and if you enjoy making money, that's one thing, but there's a cutoff for me and there's a cut, it should be a cutoff for you. There will be a point where you invest and you make certain deals in the past. You've done, you know, let's say you used to do advertising for, you know, for a company and you used to charge a thousand dollars for a, for an ad or something. And now you've worked your way up to a certain level and you're charging now $10,000, $20,000 for an ad place. And you have customers that will do that. You may have less customers, but you have customers. And it's a time value of money, but you also then start loving what you do. Because what happens is, if you start charging on the cheap and going the cheap wholesale bulk route all the time, you start getting burnt out. You start realizing that, man, I really I really don't even like this whole thing. I don't even I don't even want to do this anymore. And that's kind of what happened in my life in many cases. Like I used to do, you know, sales for a, a FedEx, for example. I did sales for FedEx back in the day. And I while I was good at it, I I, I love corporate sales in many different ways, I was basically just a corporate you know, puppet. I basically was you know, employee number X9, 2000, whatever, whatever you know, serial number you want to name, I was replaceable. And you realize that even though you make decent money on something, it isn't what you're passionate about. And I want you guys to think about that. In this bulk, this buying bulk negotiation thing, I've had these little different points. It's really important to understand that just because you're making money on bulk, you have to understand that if you don't really like it, you don't appreciate, you know, if you really do, don't like this kind of wholesale mentality, this type of buying these large volume mentality, and it just, it, it, it drains your body and drains your mind, I wouldn't do it. Life's too short. Life's too short to look at a bunch of comments, according to Rudy. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.